Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. As promised, welcome to Castlevania. Uh, as for the crowded um, thing, this is made for uh, TVs that are not what TVs look like anymore. Oh, them tunes. All right, let me turn this down a little. Castlevania is known for having some of the tastiest jams in video game history. So I said that I would do some Castlevanias on the channel, and here we are. I just turned myself down, actually. Whoops, pardon me. Anyway, I promised I would do some Castlevanias, and we're doing some. So as you can see, this game looks like crap, because it was built for the NES. Let's check this out. If you jump, you have to turn around to go back in the door. All right. So I talked about this a little bit in my Bloodstained playthrough, but Bloodstained is essentially a spin-off of Castlevania. Uh, Castlevania is a game where you fight Drac- I have hiccups, pardon me. You fight Castlevania Dracula. Hup. Check that out. I've been practicing at this game because it's really hard. Um, the Castlevania series has a lot of history. Geez, sorry about that. Uh, Castlevania has a lot of history. Involving something like 40 years of video games. However, it starts here. Not at Symphony of the Night. Symphony of the Night. Uh, and I'm going to do my best to play through this game about as standard as I possibly can. Um, obviously, this is an emulator because this game is not on PC by default. Actually, I think it's... I think there is a version on PC now, though. So coming up is the thing that I like about Castlevania. It's never like purely... Wall chicken here. It's never like purely linear. Normally the stage would go over there, and in fact it does continue over that way. But we actually have no way to get over there barring some secret speedrun tactics. So we go underneath and then go up. This is the first place where a uh, bottomless pit is introduced, meaning if we die here, we die for real. So yeah, this is the first Castlevania, and it's pretty basic, as you can see. Like, it's just guy with a whip going into a castle. At this point, it's not even common knowledge that his name is Simon Belmont. For whatever reason, it's spelled as Belmondo in the credits, which we will see, I promise you that. And uh, on top of that, it's also... Uh, only mentioned in the Japanese instruction manual for this game, I think. that his name is, you know, Simon Belmont. But yes, this is Simon Belmont. He's the first uh, Belmont that we were properly introduced to. Uh, and for the first couple games, he was the Belmont. It was known that he had a, you know, a history with Dracula. This makes you invincible. I believe it's a Laurel from Castlevania 2, but I'm not entirely sure, considering that a, it's not what a Laurel is. So this first one is a, this first level is about as simple as simple gets. But to make it easier, there's an upgrade in this block. I've been practicing a lot because this game's pretty hard. Sorry. The input for uh, go upstairs and use sub weapons is up. For both things, it's up. Yeah. But this, this is the bat. It's just the, the basic starting boss of a lot of Castlevania games. In fact, almost every Castlevania game starts with a bat because of this game. Um, I'm honestly going to roll right into the next one. Because <laughs> that was... Ooh, that one's piercing. That one's easy. But yeah, um... Thank you. But yeah, pretty simple, all things considered.
All right, so we've lost our axe, but we've gained the cross. We also lost our hearts, but you start with five hearts, so that's fine. So the cross is my favorite weapon because of that. Sneaky bat. Damn it. So coming up here is um, one of the first really hard early sections. Look at that, easy peasy. One of the first like hard sections Castlevania has in its early game. Castlevania is long known for being like hardest game of all time shit. I don't really think that's the case, but I don't I certainly don't think it's easy. It's not like a Mario Brothers. One minute, I'm gonna turn down my own audio. There we go. Should render some interference. So these are the Medusa heads, often thought of as like the worst enemies in video game history, but they actually have very specific rules. As you can see, when I was just standing there and walking at my normal pace, they move pretty evenly. The sine wave path that they follow is based on Simon Belmont's own movement. They come at you from whatever direction you're facing. Is there a chicken here? No. I've missed a chicken then. So this pit right here, let me... This pit right here will kill you instantly if you fall into it, like all pits. And there you go. So we've got a... So you see, you can just walk through it, as long as you don't jump. Because that'll change the height. But now that we've died, I can talk about one of the other mechanics. You may notice that my whip doesn't look the same anymore. Uh, upon death in this Castlevania game specifically, and I think most of the remakes do this as well, you lose your whip and have to pick up these items. You can see my whip is now back to where it was. Uh, initially, it's just called the leather whip. And then I believe it's upgraded to the chain whip and then the magic whip. This is the magic whip. Uh, because this is the era where all things that are good are called the magic blank. You cannot be knocked back while you're on the stairs. But you still gotta make that jump, though. Crap. So you see, because I gotta turn around there, we got one coming from this side. So yeah, this short little crap whip is the leather whip, and then we have the chain whip. And then, yeah, because it's, it's the era, we upgrade to the magic whip. Recall, if you will, that in the original Legend of Zelda, the Master Sword, possibly the most iconic weapon in video games ever, is called the Magic Sword, not the Master Sword. See, so yeah, this is where Castlevania kind of teaches you that, like, hey, get good. <laughs> All right, we made it. Well, that was stupid. I saw that coming, kind of froze. I don't know what happened exactly. So you can see that the Leather Whip also does less damage than its counterparts. That said, it's pretty quick to just hit some candles and get back to the uh, Magic Whip. So it's kind of weird as to why they would... Well, this is interesting. One of the most complimentary things about this game is that when hitting continue, you start from the level that you left off on. Meaning the only way to not beat this game is to quit. As long as you're persistent, you'll beat the game. Um, which is honestly very much to its credit. Castlevania has infinite continues. And while you do only have three lives, and you will need them, as long as you beat a stage, you can stay on that stage basically forever. You can see that with the magic whip, we can hit him all the way from the other side. And then, yeah, there's a checkpoint right here. Pretty simple stuff. It's just that that pit is something that is really annoying, and I specifically have lots of issues with. I don't know what it is about that pit, but it's just a problem. 
That was dumb. I feel like I'm missing a chicken. I can't be there. Anyway, yes, I've practiced a lot on this game because I want to beat it. Oop. See, there's the thing, right? One moment. Hey, we're back. I've seen a lot of this hallway. Wow, that was even worse. All right. Let's try this again. Okay, that doesn't work. The specific pattern that Medusa heads take is a... Well, you know, it's a sine wave, naturally. This thing is always a chain, or a whip upgrade. Which is kind of weird, because... The whip upgrades are, like, almost semi... Where did I put this? There we go. Wow. Almost semi, like, almost not random, you know? Like, there that one was. And there that one was again. So it's kind of weird. Um, I just took a shower, which is why my hair is like this. Walking off screen will sometimes respawn enemies. But yeah, this thing's a problem. Oh, Jesus. Like, straight up and down. Gonna be hearing a lot of that. And I ran back. Okay. So wait here. The, uh, the whole fall in a pit is instant death thing is kind of annoying. So you can see that because we already had the max upgraded whip, the thing that normally would have been a whip upgrade instead contained money. Ooh, I got closer that time. This is what this game wants from you. It wants you to memorize. It wants you to realize and learn. It's part of what makes this game so satisfying and fun. You really do got to just knuckle down and learn. You must get good. It is the only way. Um, it's the Castlevania series. I mentioned this in Bloodstained, of course, but if you didn't watch that. Has a uh, interesting reputation. Nice! We made it. So there's a thing that you can do, because you get knocked back when a Medusa head hits you, you can also get um, knocked up slightly. Well, you can get hit upwards into the air. Sorry, I'm trying to time it so I can hit this fucking candle. Why take a chance? There we go. Is it here? No. That's fine. Castlevania has something of a reputation. This game has been remade or re-released something like eight times. Uh, and there hasn't been a new Castlevania game in years. Normally it's unsafe to go over there and kill that guy, but that's okay. Storp Watch. Yeah, um, I'm making this because as of uh, last week, maybe two weeks ago, uh, Castlevania the Anime Season 4 got greenlit. All right, look at that. Um, so yeah, we're going to have another season of the Castlevania Anime. Uh, the Castlevania Anime is actually pretty damn good, which is good news for us. Okay, so this part's a pain in the dick. Because that uh, that's an instant kill there. Yep. Something that's nice is that you can just crouch this one. It will not kill you. 
Huh? Oh, we made it. That's a phantom or ghost. And now we have uh, these things, which are called bone pillars, I believe. You gotta, like... There we go. Something useful is that the way that blocks are constructed is that you can see that your jump is, like, so many of these blocks. I believe it's three or four. Um, and then here, they show you the bone pillar. This is a good piece of game design. Um, piece and antipiece. They show you the bone pillar, and they're like, that one is... Let me use my pointer here. This one is safe because it's shooting into the wall and cannot hurt you. And as long as you stay standing here, this one will shoot, and you can observe it safely. Now, you could run up, but I'm going to use the clock. So, to use the sub weapon, you just hit up and the attack button. And then it's six hits to kill them. Uh, you may notice that we're missing two pips from our health bar. For whatever reason, in Castlevania 1, the health bar is 16 pips long, but for the first two levels, uh, enemies do two pips of damage no matter what. For the next two levels, I believe they do... Um, three pegs, which is interesting because it'll leave you with the little crucifix thing there is an instant kill for every enemy. And hey, we're coming up on another boss here. Uh, this is a Medusa. She's pretty easy. Oh my god, I dropped a holy water. Oh, fuck. I really wanted that. The Holy Water is the best sub-weapon in the game, to the point where it makes the bosses actually really trivial. But the clock isn't bad either. There we go. Easy money. Um, That's kind of going to do it for this episode. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this. I promised I would play it and also show off a little more of my skills on camera. Castlevania, I have a little more experience with. Um, it's an older game, so I've seen more of it. Um, but yeah, that's, a. Uh, I'm gonna pause that. Um, that's Castlevania 1, everyone. Thanks for coming by. Uh, I'm an Alfred. See you next time. Bye.